We've seen that short run total cost curves can cross, and I explained that in general we think that the most intuitive situation is that they do cross. So I'm going to assume crossing. <coughs> I've drawn here uh, these two different short run total cost curves. I'll call the one that has the, the purple beginning and end SRTC2 and the other one SRTC1. <coughs> so we have fixed cost 1, fixed cost 2. Here we've got fixed cost 1, fixed cost 2, SRTC1, and SRTC2. For any given Q, what the firm wants to do is pick the lowest cost. So, let me see, sketch using another color, I'll use this color, what the lowest cost of producing any given Q is. So at Q equals zero, the lowest cost is here. At this Q, the lowest cost is this one. This Q, the lowest cost is this one. This Q, the lowest cost is a tie. This Q, the lowest cost is here, this one here, and this one here. So you have a combination. You follow SRTC1 for small Qs, and then you switch over to SRTC2 for large Qs. How about in the type 2 situation? For small Qs, the cheapest method of production is to follow along SRTC1. For large queues, the cheapest method of production is to follow along SRTC2. <coughs> so if you think of the of having a possibility of two amounts of fertilizer, F0 and, and F2, or F1 and F2, as being an intermediate run, then in this sort of medium run, the the choice is what you have shown by the, the green dots. Now what if we set make another step towards the long, a further step towards the long run and give the guy a choice of three different amounts of fertilizer to buy and let's let this this new amount of fertilizer be larger than the other two well then we have a new short run total cost curve I'll call the fixed cost FC3 And then I'll draw in the SRTC3 so that it crosses the other two. In this case, it might look like this. So there's a crossing and there's another crossing. SRTC3, and in this case, SRTC3. <coughs> so in this case, if the firm has a choice of these three, SRTC3 is really expensive for small queues. Even for medium queues, it's not relevant. But for large queues, it is relevant. So using a different color to mark the relevant short run total cost, that's what would be relevant in the first graph. And this is what would be relevant in the second graph. So you're always taking what's called the lower envelope other short run total cost curves. <coughs> well, what you can do with two and three amounts of fertilizer, you can do with an arbitrarily l large numbers of, of fertilizers. So let's consider that kind of situation. We have lots and lots of possible amounts of fertilizer to choose between. So in the first example, on the left-hand side, lower left, I'm still going to use type 1. And I'll have each one of these short and total cost curves have the same type 1 shape. So these are different SRTCs with of course, different amounts of fixed costs corresponding to different amounts of the fixed input, which I'm assuming is fertilizer. And then the the relevant 
almost long run cost curve is the lower envelope of these. If I were in a type 2 situation, I have basically the same. Each one f is first concave and then convex because you have type 2 behavior. These are SRTCs and the relevant almost long run cost curve would be that. As you move from the short run to the long run, it becomes less and less important whether you're talking about type 1 or type 2. Because type 1 and type 2 behavior is short run behavior. Remember it's a cross section of the production function is asking how does how does output change when you hold one input fixed, or all the inputs fixed except for one. And in the long run you have freedom. Well as you can see there's there's not actually a lot of difference between this graph and this graph. And that's because now we're almost in the long run and being almost in the long run the distinction between t type 1 and type 2 becomes less and less important. In fact, go to the extent of oops, choosing let's say an arbitrary almost long run total cost curve so maybe oh I don't know let's pick something weird and if these are almost long run total cost I claim that I can generate these from either type 1 or type 2 behavior in the following way. Type 1, all these curves have to be convex. In type 2, they all have to be first concave and then convex. And so forth. So you can generate <coughs> an arbitrary almost long run total cost curve from either type 1 or type 2 cross sections of the production function. It doesn't really matter. And then the question is going to be what are the interesting kinds of long run total cost curves? Now for short run total cost curves there are only two kinds that we were interested in, type 1 and type 2. And they were constrained by the law of diminishing returns. You know that the cross sections of the production function eventually have to become concave. That's what the law of diminishing returns says. There's no such uh, principle related to the long run and therefore there are a lot more possibilities for what long run total cost curves might look like. So what we're going to study next are the long run total cost curves that economists traditionally study. They're the simplest ones. They're by no means the only ones but they are the traditional ones to look at.